What's up my LS Crazy Amigos, it's your boy Terry speaking from the Garage Shop once again. Here to offer you some more Big Bang for the Buck product and info. Hmm, what's happening? What do you got? What are you guys looking? Oh, this? <laughs> Let's just say this got a little out of control in my 70, 67 Chevelle. Let's just say you got a little out of control, but now we're not going to talk about this. What we're going to talk about today, we're going to do a video on this soon, so stay tuned for that. What we're going to talk about today is LSA superchargers. Now, if you don't know what an LSA supercharger is, an LSA supercharger was a supercharger that came stock from GM on D-Series Cadillacs and ZL1 Camaros, you know, and it's beautiful. And uh, there was a big recall. And that recall could work in your advantage. I'm going to tell you exactly how. So let's go over to the let's go to the part of the garage shop where I keep all my all my parts, and I'll explain. <laughs> Out of control. <laughs> this is the bottom half of a Chevrolet or Cadillac LSA supercharger that came on the B series and the ZL ones. All right, now the beauty of this thing is is it it's it's self-contained. It's liquid cooled. And the problem with what happened with GM where they had to recall these things were, is they used a spring-loaded isolator, all right? Now, in theory, it's kind of cool because when you decelerate or either accelerate, it doesn't, you know, put too much of a strain on the, on the lobes or whatever, which is a good idea. But the problem was people were dropping, what, how much was this? How much is a ZL1? I think it was like a $56,000 car, and the Cadillac V-Series was north of 70, 80,000. So people were dropping these, that type of heavy dough on cars, and uh, like a couple weeks later, you would hear a whine. So that's why eventually GM said, you know what, let's recall all the super the, the superchargers back. So what they did was, instead of fixing it, which you can do very easily, they just took this whole piece off, replaced it with a new one with a solid isolator, and people went on their merry way. Put the top back on, and then went on their merry way. Then what happened is you have a whole bunch of these things laying around GM and all you got to do is get a few parts and you got yourself a supercharged engineered. Now remember this was engineered for the LS3 for the you know for the LS engine which is really cool. You're going to need square port heads to work as a supercharger for the LS3. It's a great power adder. And the best part about it is is that you could pick these things up off of eBay for about four or five hundred dollars but they're going up now i've seen them somewhere you can get them for about four or five hundred dollars if you're lucky at this point but now they're going up to about eight or nine hundred dollars but even still at that price it's not a bad deal because you buy this thing and you get a couple of other pieces now what we're going to do is we're going to do a video we're going to put one on my 71 chevelle now i was fortunate enough to have a friend who had a whole bunch of them laying around and i picked them up <laughs> you know so if you can go around and you can get them you should get them now, when you're picking one of these things up from off of eBay, it's kind of almost like a crapshoot, but chances are they're going to be pretty decent. But if you're fortunate enough to be in a spot where you are actually there before you buy it, you, you, you can touch the thing, you can examine it. These are things to look out for. You want to make sure this thing spins freely, all right, that there's no bind or, or crunch, all right, and you want to make sure that there's no play between the lobes. You know, this looks like it's good. You make sure the lobes spin and there's no no bind or crunch or any type of uh, you know thing stopping and you know stopping it from spinning freely. Now, if you feel like I said, if you feel like a little bit of play here, that's going to be okay because that's the spring loaded isolator and there is a little bit of play in it. And like I said, once you swap it out, that should that should go away. This is so, how you pull the snoot off. Now. I'm not going to, you know, like, you know, there's two tabs right here. There's one on this side, on the passenger side, and one on the driver's side. All right. Now, you got to get a some type of crowbar or something to break it because I don't know what kind of mutant GM glue they use to attach the snoot to the body of this thing, but it is tight. So I'll tell you right now, you see this? Don't waste your time trying to use this. No, no, no. You need a Mac Daddy. I was able to pop this by myself, and what I did was I put one in this side, loosen the screws, pop, on that side, pop. Now, to break this bond that GM bestowed upon this unit, what you gotta do is you gotta use leverage. Now, this is where you're gonna put that, that, that crowbar or that breaker bar, whatever you need. You're gonna put it right in there. See that tab? This is on the, this is on the driver's side. Put it right in there, 
and pop it. And then you're gonna put on the on the driver's side, on passenger side, you're gonna put it right in there. Let's see, right there. You see that? And pop it. All right. So let's look inside this thing. Okay. Now, uh, this is the housing. All right. Now, what the spring loaded isolator is is this thing right here. Let me see if I can pull it out. There it is, right here. You see this? That's let's go up close. This is the spring loaded isolator that GM used, all right? And uh, like I said, in theory, it's kind of cool because when your car accelerates, it, it doesn't put too much of a load on the, on the supercharger and when it decelerates, it kind of cushions it a little bit. But like I said, people spending like however many you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a brand new car and you hear a whine and it also ruins the, the, the little uh, part of the supercharger right here, the little, uh, I don't know what this thing is called, but it ruins it. You can even see like this indentation, you see, right there. That's where the inside of the spring started eating away at this little shaft. Now there's a lot of companies out there that have a fix for it, but I went with my good friends at Medco because like I said, they've been, they've been strong and solid with building parts for the LS uh, conversions and they came through again. They make a solid isolator. You know, you could just put it right in there, boom. Put this thing back in, your problem solved. You're ready to rock and roll, all right? Now, I'm not going to make it sound, like I said, I'm not going to make it sound like, you know, all you got to do is do this and, you know, I mean, you're going to make sure that your supercharger is, is in working order, that your lobes aren't messed up or anything like that, you know, and, you know, it should, it would be good to get it serviced, of course, but, I mean, like I said, for about two grand, $2,500, you can supercharge your car. And like I said, you have no limits with this thing. You depend on how far you want to go. If you want to go meth injection and get a smaller pulley, whatever, you can do that. And these things are great. And like I said, I got a couple of them and I'm going to, I'm going to do a video putting one on and showing you guys how to hook it up on a 70, on my 71 Chevelle, my little workhorse. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see where it goes from there. But, uh, that's, that's, that's what the LSA supercharge is all about. I can't wait to start on this. And, um, I'm looking forward to this one, <laughs> you, see how, you know, because we're going to get a dyno and everything and we're going to see how much horsepower this thing is pushing. Now, looking at the clock on the wall, or should I say ceiling, it's time for me to head on off and do some more tweaking to this car because uh, eventually we'll put an LSA blower in this thing as well. And uh, so what I want to do is say thank you for everyone who's been showing love, asking the questions and give me all kinds of support for doing these LSA videos and you know, like I'm having a good time and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying them. All right. Now, if you have a question, don't hesitate, please. You know how to reach me. I'm not a hard person to find. All right. But for now, please always be easy and I will catch you guys real soon. Take care.